Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday, the weekly YouTube series where we talk about video game console repairs, mods, and restorations. And for this week, we have something that is uh, pretty rare and uh, unprecedented, I think. It's called the uh, Heat Kit Pong Arcade Kit. So this is a Pong console, and um, it's really different from any other Pong console that I've ever come across. So normally these things, they connect via RF, and um, they're pre-assembled and you bought them, you know, at Sears or Kitty City or wherever in the 70s or 80s. And they play Pong or some variation of Pong. And it looks like this thing does too. So it has a couple different options like tennis and hockey and squash and all that kind of stuff. But what makes this thing really unique is that it was sold as a do-it-yourself kit. So you would make this thing, uh, it would all come, as, you know, as, as pieces and you'd have to figure out how to put it together and make it work on your own. Um, but what's also really interesting about this thing is that it also came with a light gun. So it has two different options for light gun games called Target 1 and Target 2. Um, I have no idea how they work because there's no documentation about this thing pretty much at all. Uh, only just a small little bit of information on the internet. So um, the other cool thing about this is that it used to connect to a Heathkit television. So Heathkit was a company that made kits for all sorts of electronics, including do-it-yourself televisions. And so you would plug this thing in to your do-it-yourself television and you'd play Pong. <laughs> so um, as you can imagine, very few of these exist, and even if a person has one of these, um, you need a Heathkit television that works in order to use it. So, you know, the chances of having that is like, you know, almost nothing. So, um, on this week's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing apart and we're going to document it because there's really no information out there about it. We're going to try to figure out how to take this connection and turn it into something that's usable on a um, normal TV. And uh, if we get it all working, then I'm going to show you guys how everything works uh, so that you can see it for yourselves. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so I have finished disassembling the case, and um, I just wanted to give you guys a little tour of what I found on the inside. So this is the front panel, and you can see that it fits right here on top of these two potentiometers, and basically, uh, here are the knobs. You just kind of mechanically pull these off, so that's something you just have to do, and uh, it might be a little scary at first, but really all you gotta do is just pull these guys out, and then underneath there, there are these little nuts that hold the front panel together onto the circuit board, and you just take, you know, a wrench and remove those. And that is actually all that you need to do in order to disassemble this thing. It's really not that complex um, to, to take apart. Um, and so what you have basically is you have an AY38501 chip, and this is a very, very common chip that's used in Pong consoles. Um, You've got a crystal oscillator here for a clock. Um, it looks like you have two discrete logic chips, um, only two capacitors that are electrolytic, um, and you know just some very basic components, and then these are the mode switches. So in many respects, this Pong console is rather similar to, to other ones. Um, the, the main things that are different, apparently, though, is that this outputs composite video instead of RF, which is what most of them do. And uh, it also sends volume to the television, and so the television comes out of, I'm sorry, the sound comes out of the television instead of out of the Pong uh, arcade, uh, console. What's interesting, though, too, is if you look inside of the plastic, there is a spot here for a speaker. So maybe they thought about having an internal speaker like normal Pong machines, but then they, they nixed that idea and they decided to get the audio sent out to the TV. Not really sure. Um, but, you know, the good thing is, is that since this is using a standard chip for Pong, I can determine the pinouts of this, and I can, you know, basically follow the wiring and confirm, you know, which of these various uh, connections correspond to, you know, composite video out, and audio, and ground, and all that good stuff. Alright, so I'll be back in a bit once I have some more information. Alright, so we're back, and I just wanted to update you guys on some of the progress that I've made um, so far. So what I was able to do is basically track out the pinouts uh, from, from this chip. This is the AY38500 uh, uh, chip. And the pinout of this is on the internet, so you can easily follow it. And what I was able to do was determine that, you know, this track out here, this is, this is ground, and that connects up, to, connects up to the ground pin on uh, the AY chip. And then pin 4 over here, 
this is um, the voltage coming into the chip, and that's this trace here. And so basically, I was able to follow those out and and come all the way over to here, and this is where the inputs um, uh, to the board and some of the outputs are, are going to. So when you flip it over, um, what I was able to determine was basically that this red line over here is your voltage coming in. Uh, it looks like it gets regulated here with this um, voltage regulator. I'm pretty sure it's a voltage regulator. And uh, from there it eventually heads over to the to the AY chip. Uh, this black line here is ground and then these two are, uh, compo are, are composite video and audio. I'm not yet sure which is which. Uh, that's something I'm gonna have to still figure out. But anyhow, if you follow those connections, they come out over here and uh, and you can basically track where red goes. And so red goes basically into this cable that comes that comes out. Um, black also does the same thing. And then there's also this brown uh, line here that also gets split off from the ground. And that's, that's the ground used for the composite video and audio. Um, so basically you have two grounds coming out. And then um, just as before, you have your composite video and audio going straight to that connector that's on the outside. So now I have a pretty good idea of how this thing is wired up. It's not perfect because I don't yet know which one is video and which one is audio, but nevertheless, I should be able to construct some custom cables now and connect those up and basically use a USB cell phone charger to power the device. And uh, hopefully that will be enough so that I can get a picture out of this thing for the first time in you know who knows how many years. Okay, so I kept probing the um, connections from the chip, and I'm pretty sure at this point that I know that the the white uh, connection over here is very likely to be sound, and then this green one here is supposed to be video. I'm pretty sure. Um, but uh, again, even if I'm wrong, it's not the end of the world here, because the important thing is that I'm not switching the power and the ground. So basically what I've done here is I've created a kind of custom cable. And uh, if you recall, the, uh, the Heathkit has this strange little five pin Molex connector for its various outputs and inputs. So power and ground come in and then audio, video and ground go out. And that's what this thing does. So I found a corresponding uh, you know, uh, connector in my pile of parts. And basically what I did was I, I you know, created a custom cable for it, and I just used the color coding coming into the connector as my guide. And so the power and the ground are going to this USB cable that I cannibalized, and that I'm going to take and feed to a cell phone charger, which should provide enough voltage. And then the audio and the video are going to be going to these composite video jacks. Um, I put the audio on this pin, and then I put the video on this one, or at least I think. Um, so now really is the moment of truth. I'm going to plug everything in and we're going to see if this thing works. All right, so I just did a quick test and unfortunately things didn't work. I had absolutely no signal on the screen, um, but I think I figured out why. So this thing is definitely expecting an input voltage higher than five volts. So right now I'm using a cell phone charger that brings five volts straight into here, but it looks like the regulation circuit brings that five volts down to about a volt and a half by the time it actually gets to the chip over here. And that's way too low. So this chip is expecting five volts to operate. So what I'm doing is something that should work, but again, I'm kind of in uncharted territory here. So I measured here at the switch and at the switch I'm receiving a solid five volts and that switch is also directly connected up to this light bulb. So what I did was I patched a wire going straight from the light bulb because frankly it's an easy connection and going right over down here and this is the output of that voltage regulator and that's running at a solid five volts now or should. So, so now the chip should definitely receive five volts and uh, hopefully that's gonna do it so that we can get some, uh, some punk. All right, back in a second. All right, so we are back and I have um, connected everything up. And now, as you guys can see, this Pong console is working. And um, I'm really kind of blown away by how advanced this thing is for uh, the time period. So, you know, this, this was made in 1976. And at that time, there was really no such thing as composite video. And uh, this thing has it. It has composite video. You can see that the image is extremely clean and crisp. 
The audio is coming from the TV. That's also really unique uh, for Pong consoles. They never do that. They always have their own internal speaker. And um, these controls are extremely smooth. So you can see they're very, very responsive. So yeah, the only thing I had to do aside from my wiring um, was just add that little bodge wire going from uh, the voltage input straight to the output of the regulator just to bypass that voltage regulation. We don't need it anymore because we're sending five volts to the system, which is what it's looking for. All right, so let me give you kind of a quick overview of how this thing works. So in a lot of ways, it's very similar to Pong consoles of the time. So, you know, you can change modes. You have tennis, you've got hockey, you've got squash, and you've got a practice mode as well. So all of those things are pretty common to these Pong consoles. Um, you can adjust the size of the bats from small to large. You can do auto serve. Um, you can change the speed from fast to, uh, here I'll show you, from fast to slow. Uh, using this little toggle switch here. So now fast is unbelievably fast. Like you have to be extremely good to, to handle that. And then you can adjust the angle of the bounces so that they can either be shallow 20 degrees or, sh or sharp at 40 degrees, which is a lot harder to deal with. So, you know, that's all very common for Pong uh, consoles. What's really cool about this particular one is it has touch sensors. So when you start, you just have to touch this start and then it, that's it, it works. It also has a reset button right here for um, starting over again. For now, I'm just gonna hit it on auto and you can just see how, how it works. So yeah, these, these, um, these are very easy to use. Um, pretty straightforward. So, so yeah, so I think overall it's a really nice system. Uh, for 1976, this would have been like top of the line. And what's so cool about this is that it's DIY. You know, you didn't, you didn't buy this made in Sears or Woolworths or whatever. You made this yourself, and I really particularly like that. So now, um, next thing I want to do is just briefly show you guys the gun feature, because that's really unique. I don't think there's any Pong console that I'm aware of that has this. So if you spent extra, you would get this Heathkit GDA 1380-1. Uh, light gun. And so this is again a light gun from 1976. It's pretty cool to see this in the home. I don't really think there was anything quite like that at the time except for the Magnavox Odyssey if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, let me show you guys how it works. So you have two modes. You have target one and target two. So if you hit reset, the scores vanish and then you have to shoot the screen and if you hit the target you hear that little beep. So that tells you that you've gotten it. Um, it seems to be pretty lenient about the aiming. I mean, like, as long as you're hitting the TV, you're pretty good. Uh, like, if I just, I mean, you can see there, I wasn't even aiming at the TV at all, and and it was and it was uh, registering that as a hit. So you know, it's not it's not like a light gun from the Nintendo. But if you if you go like way off, it's not going to register it. Um, I think the idea with this game, too, is that you're supposed to fire off a shot and then hand it off to your buddy, and he fires off a shot. And whoever gets to 15 first wins. I think that that's kind of the logic here with, with this gun. The target, too, is similar, but I think it's actually a lot harder. Like, you need to be far more accurate, and the pattern is a little harder to predict. So, so let's try that one. Yeah, so it is actually more sensitive. You see, like, if I, if I go, like, way off... It doesn't, it doesn't quite register. So you see I'm firing at the floor here and it's not registering. So I think it's a little bit more sensitive and the pattern is more uh, unpredictable. Um, I think this is definitely a little bit more fun. Um, it's definitely cool because again, there was nothing like this uh, aside from the Magnavox Odyssey back in the day. Most Pong consoles didn't have this kind of feature. Um, so, so yeah, that kind of gives you an overview of this system. Uh, what's really nice is that I only had to do a very minor modification internally to make it work, and all the original wiring and everything is the same as it was uh, from, the, from, from the kit. And uh, what's really cool is that you guys are going to be able to enjoy this yourselves because it's going to be at the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo uh, later this year. All right, so if you guys like this content, uh, please feel free to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm going to be making more videos like this every week. And uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.